Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Eva. Eva's across from me today. Hi. Hi. Having breakfast still. Okay, today is September 11. What do we remember on September 11? Oh, yeah. Um, Three days after. Um, um, the, the, yeah, the you know Eva. Of the Twin Towers. Okay, so 9/11, oh, wow. right? September 11. The uh, huh? Okay, so read up on the uh, read up on the events of September 11, 2001. 2001, and for us that's a very significant date. Because that was practically counting just a few months when we had arrived in America. We arrived in America in May 2001. And uh, things were still very difficult for us. And all of a sudden, uh, September 11 happens. Of course, the, the month before that, uh, Grandma Lely died. And we couldn't go home because our, our papers were with the immigration officers and then September 11 happens and more tragedy not only the tragedy is not only for the victims of September 11 but you know even us our own family mommy and I uh, suffered a great deal of the consequences of and the effects of September 11 but as we remember those days as we remember the victims of September 11 uh, we also count the blessings that came as a consequence of that. And for people who survived that and went through that, um, which in, in here I'm not only talking about the actual victims and families of those who went through 9-11, but the whole country, because the whole country practically got uh, badly affected by that tragedy. And thanks to God, give thanks to God for our ability to rebound from that tragedy and well America is where it is right now thanks to the resilience and the grit of the American people and we learned plenty of lessons from that situation <clears throat> God bless you okay so today uh, it's a little apropos that we read the gospel of St. Luke chapter 6 verses 20 to 26 um, because here our Lord also talks uh, to his disciples about suffering, about tragedies in life. Okay? But here our Lord is presenting things in a very ironic way. Okay? And let, let, let's read the first part of it. He says, raising his eyes towards his disciples, Jesus said, remember yesterday's gospel? Uh, he was choosing his disciples. He named the 12 apostles. So today he was talking to them. And perhaps after choosing his disciples, gives them a preliminary um, outlook about things to come, about what's going to happen to their lives. Okay? And he says to them, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. You might think, how can all of these bad things be a blessing? That's, that's the biggest of ironies that you could perhaps hear, right? It's ironic. How, how can a bad thing become actually good and become, become a blessing, become a source of grace? See, that's what blessing here means. That is what to be blessed means. It means that um, you are on the receiving end of some grace, of some gift. Grace means gift. Gift in a spiritual way. Okay? It's a spiritual gift. It's a gift that God gives to our souls so that we grow 
spiritually we grow in sanctity that's what grace is all about it makes us grow in our supernatural life so our Lord is saying in this gospel that while you might have material uh, and physical deprivation while you might experience some kind of deprivation or physical pain don't lament those kinds of situations don't be too sorry for yourself about those kinds of situations because because God uses those situations in order to give us grace, in order to shower our souls with plenty of graces. You know, we are humans, right? We are not angels. We are made of body and soul. Unlike the angels who are pure spirits, they never experience any of our physical sufferings. But we human beings, we are made of a body. We have a body. Okay? And this body of ours is broken, broken by original sin. And therefore, it's subject to plenty of suffering, plenty of uh, tragedies, plenty of mishaps, plenty of wrong things that can go with it. We get sick, we get hungry, we get tired, and we get discouraged. And many things, many wrong things can happen to us. But Jesus tells us, you know, Despite all of that, consider yourself blessed because, why? Because that is a source of grace. That is where and how our Lord can shower our souls with plenty of graces. Now, what? that's ironic because uh, it's, it's difficult for a person who has no faith to understand that. Right? Uh, how can that be true? That is something impossible. For anybody who is faithless to grasp and to understand because really on the plainly material plane and logical plane it doesn't stand to reason how can bad situations be good right but this irony only makes sense to somebody who has faith it only makes sense to somebody who understands that these things are God's way of inviting us to participate in His salvific mission. That all the bad things that can happen in our lives are actually a means and a source for us to participate in God's salvific mission. We are in one way or another participating <clears throat> in helping people primarily ourselves become saints and why how, how does that happen how can how can we how can these bad things become our way of participating in the salvific mission of Jesus Christ well because these kinds of sufferings that we experience in life they have three I'd like to think three uh, basic uh, uh, consequences for us number one they purify our souls Okay? Suffering, suffering is a means of purification. It is a way to purify our souls. When we suffer, our Lord is cleaning up our soul of, of many things. Hi, Eva. Of many of our personal... <laughs> yes, I'm so distracted with your cuteness, Eva. <laughs> okay. Okay. Our... our <laughs> sorry. Uh, our soul gets purified, gets purified when we suffer. Number two, number two, it humbles us. It makes us realize our dependence on God. That, that we ourselves, just by relying on ourselves, we cannot do everything we need to do. That we are helpless many times with our own situations. And that we need to depend on God to get out of the bad situation we are in. And thirdly, and thirdly, it is sanctifying. Okay? Difficulties and challenges and sufferings that we, we go through in life are a means of our own sanctification. Because they are, they are the means by which God can give us grace. Okay? Actual graces that can help us overcome these situations. Okay, so today as we... 
as we commemorate 9-11, let's also recall, eh, recall that when we experience suffering in life, whatever it is, no matter how, how small, eh, uh, when we experience suffering in life, remember the three things, purification, humility, sanctity. Eh? That these are the effects of suffering in ourselves. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, Ed Imperial and Erwin are on the call. Hey, Eva, say goodbye, Eva. Eva. Say goodbye. Hi, Eva. Look at you there. Ah, uh -uh, there. And Jojo. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. bye.